Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. If you're new around these parts, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It sure does mean a lot to us. This is going to be a pretty fun video, guys. We are working on a new build. We've gotten a lot of requests for new builds, and we've gotten lots of questions about different kinds of builds that we could put together out there. And so I think we've come up with something fun for you today. Now this is going to be and it's part of our best mining rigs series. Now I can't necessarily call it part two, but call this a 0 0.5, something like that. These types of builds are great for experienced miners, but what if there's somebody that doesn't have $3,000 and maybe they're new to mining? Or they just don't have $3,000, $5,000, $7,000, $7, but maybe they have five, six, seven hundred dollars in their pocket. What could you build? So I decided to take on this challenge, and, and one of the suggestions that was sent to me was buying a refurbished system. So I decided to take on the challenge, and I went out on Amazon and I purchased a refurbished system, and we're going to open it up, we're going to tear it apart today and see exactly what we can do with it. Now, if you had the goal of just putting together a budget build, there's plenty of other ways to go about doing this, and if you have done it, please leave it in the comments below and let us know what you found, what worked out well for you. Uh, so for example, some of the folks that comment on a few of the videos, they purchase parts from eBay and get really good deals on a uh, motherboard CPU combo that somebody's selling off from an old rig and they don't want it anymore. There's, there's tons of options, ways that you can go. But to accomplish the challenge, what was set before us was can you do it with a refurbished PC build is something that is between that $500 mark, maybe six, seven hundred. And I don't know, maybe we'll come up with an option or two sub 1000. So let's call it between 500 and a thousand dollars that could get you out of the gate up and mining somewhere around 90 mega hash to hundred mega hash per second on Ethereum and could probably give you a good opportunity to hit some other algorithms. Now, with that in mind, taking on the challenge, what I did is I went out and purchased off of Amazon this HP Elite Pro Business Desktop. It's got four gigs of RAM pre-installed, 250 gig hard drive, again, all this is up and running, Windows 7, and this is a renewed machine. Now, I went out and looked up the specs on this, and I actually shopped quite a few of these. And the reason I got this was one, it is a mini tower case. Um, there's some micro ATX stuff, some weird case configurations. I wanted something that gave us a little bit of room in case we went with a really simple build in the end with one or two video cards. And I don't know what we're going to run into here. If you watch the channel, you know I don't like buying renewed, refurbished, used. But it's the challenge at hand today. So we could open this thing up and it could not work at all. That's absolutely a possibility. Uh, we could open it up and run into some issues with the PCIe slots that I'm not thinking of, that I'm not anticipating. I am anticipating having issues with the power supply. I'm guessing we're going to have something like a 250 watt power supply in here, probably one of the cheapest ones that they could put in, not very good efficiency. But again, at a $105 price point, this is, you know, we're making some concessions here. And, you know, let's see, hopefully. There's not an issue with the processor. Let's see if it powers up and powers on. Let's start taking a look at what slots are available in there. Let's break down the power supply and see what we've got. And then let's make some decisions on video cards. I did pick up uh, a used power supply and a new power supply to see exactly what we're going to need to put in there to make things work in these different configurations. Now, some other stuff that I picked up for other configurations you guys all know it's it's not a secret at all anymore. The 1660 Ti right now that's our that's our favorite card period in the story for mining in 2019. Um, right behind that is the 1660, whichever works out best for you there. We're going to give you all of those options, but you could put in potentially two to three of these 1660s in this rig, and you're only using one PCIe power uh, port on the cards themselves and you could get pretty good hash rate out of this. So enough talk, we will dive in. Let's kinda uh, take a look at what we get out of the box. Let's see what hurdles we run into. I hope this isn't a complete fail video, uh, but if it is, hey, we tried 
and uh, we're trying to bring you some content uh, that, that you all are wanting to see. So let's see if we can meet this challenge. And again, if you guys have done anything sim similar to this, that 500 to sub $1,000 rig build, please leave that in the comments below so that we can all take a look. It's all just fun uh, taking a look at what you guys are doing out there and the great deals you're getting and how you put stuff together. That's the favorite part I have of mining. So let's jump into this unboxing. Let's dive right in. Here we go. HP logo itself looks like they touched up with I'm guessing a black magic marker where the paint had chipped off so we do have some expansion slots on here there's not going to be much room to work we'll get it open and take a look at that in a minute plenty of USB ports oh my gosh are you kidding me <laughs> that is looks like a serial printer port right there wow Take a look at that up there. And they've just used a black magic marker and gone over all of it to try to clean it up. But hey, we're not here for the case. We need a running system. Now the exciting part. Let's get this thing opened up and look inside and see what we're dealing with here. Now it's got a, what on earth did they do? I'll give you a look in there. So expansion port wise, it looks like we've got three PCI Express port slots here that we can work with. We'll go ahead and pull this uh, printer, uh, printer cable out of here to clean up some room. Before we do anything else, let's get this thing plugged in, make sure that it boots up, make sure our hard drive is working good. It says right here, shall not exceed 320 watts. So we've got a 320 watt power supply. That's not bad. The efficiency is gonna be awful. Fingers crossed the power's on. Okay guys, we are about to do the first power on test. And I have to say I'm a little nervous. Feel a fan coming on, fans. No beep from the motherboard. Ah, this is what happens when you buy used equipment. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just power this down since I turned it on just like it came out of the box. We're just gonna check all the connections, make sure everything's solid, and then give this another try. All right, let's check all the connections and then try it again. Okay, Raptor, so this is where I am. We tried to power it on, we got nothing. We did get a power LED on the front and uh, some fans spun up, but that was about it and we weren't getting any display and I didn't get any default beep, nothing like that. So what I've done is I've disconnected one of my primary monitors here uh, which has display port on it and we're bringing that into this machine and we're gonna give that a try. So send me some luck, give me, give me a like, give me a thumbs up on this video to send your well wishes to make sure that this machine will boot and let's give it a try. All right, here we go. Okay, come on. Okay, I've got a green light. Yes! Woohoo! Start Windows normally. Computer was restarted unexpectedly. So I think what I want to do here is let's get this restarted. Let's get the operating system stable here. Okay, Raptor, so this is where we are. We got this thing fired up. We have it booting. We've got it connected to a monitor, as you can see. And something sort of odd happened. The Windows 7 installation I think it had some corrupted files. Um, I just ended up in a constant loop. I couldn't uh, do any repair. I couldn't get it out of, of that loop. So um, it does, this refurbished PC does come with a support number. I did not try that. Um, I get a little bit impatient and I had a Windows 10 uh, USB image. So I threw that on here and as you can see, it is up and running and I'm going to take a few moments to try to strip out all the stuff that we don't need. I turned off everything during installation, Cortana, updates, diagnostics, all of that good stuff. I'm going to leave antivirus on just for best practice. Uh, but otherwise, 
Uh, we've got Windows 10 up and running, and I don't know if this is going to come back and bite me or not. Honestly, um, oddly enough, I have not done a Windows 7 to Windows 10 upgrade. So when I did it, this machine, one of the reasons we got this for the challenge was to use the um, to get this all in one system, right? That has everything on it. It's got a Windows OS already on there and it's got a license key. Well, I used my Windows 7 license key and it worked in Windows 10. Now, like I said, I don't know if that's going to come back and bite me, but it actually accepted it. I'm connected to the network. It's booted. It's installed the OS. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. But anyway, uh, I'm going to get the OS squared up here. Then we're going to jump inside and take one more quick look at the connections so we can figure out how we can get some cards up and running. All right, here we go. Okay, Raptors, I just wanted to give you a quick look inside the case here so you can see with a little bit more detail what we're dealing with. So we've got our CPU. We've got a fan here uh, blowing air across the CPU. We've got our two 2 gig RAM modules that are in. We actually could upgrade this if we wanted, so there is room for expansion. When I look at this machine, a couple things jump out at me. The space that we have down here to add a card is very limited. So right off the bat, I can see I could probably add one card in here uh, just because of the space that's available. There's not, there's not a ton that we can do with what we've got. So yeah, if I wanted to add a GPU onto the board the way that it is, I'm probably going to have to mount it here, take up two spots, and that's really all I'm going to get without adding some, some risers in here. And then the other thing is that really frustrates me is the proprietary nature of this motherboard. You can see here that we've got non-standard power connections into this motherboard. And the downside to that is that I can't just rip this thing out and put in a replacement power supply like the one that I purchased, a standard ATX power supply. I'm going to have to get some adapters or something like that to get this thing powered properly, uh, which is a little bit frustrating. And then there are no additional PCIe power cables to power a card with. So without a doubt, let's say I just wanted to get this thing up and running the way that it is and I'm a new miner, um, I just want to get things going. You could stop right here and drop in one card, maybe like a 1650. You don't have to bring another cable from the power supply into that graphics card. You could actually just power it from the motherboard and then just be done with it. And maybe that could be your starter system right there. You can get those pretty inexpensive, pretty cheap, and we'll leave some links uh, in the description below so that you could get this system up and running. You'd probably have a $300 miner out of the gate running Windows 7 or Windows 10 and be off and running, and that could be your starter system. But to get additional um, power to more cards, we're going to have to add another power supply. And as it turns out, I bought a couple things in preparation for this. I bought a brand new ATX power supply. I bought a used ATX power supply. And I bought a used server power supply. So I think what I'm going to do, we'll start with one, always start with one first. And then we'll go from there and see how far we could branch out. And then for this episode, I think that we'll stop there. As far as gutting this machine, maybe putting it in a new chassis or something like that, maybe I'll tackle that in an upcoming build, but this is a get it up and running, let's see what we can do to put this thing together and get it mining with minimal cost and minimal PC skills necessary. But we want to go a little bit further than that. We want to get some additional power in here. So let me get my power supply queued up and see if I can find a place to mount temporarily power supply and a few cards uh, so that we can get this going out of the gate here. All right, I'll be back. All right, so we've powered down the machine and I'm going to start getting to work inside here. One thing I want to say just in case there are some folks that are new that are watching this video and maybe you haven't worked inside PCs before, a couple things. First, always make sure you ground yourself. So touch a piece of metal on the outside of the case to make sure you're grounded. And the second thing is, is always disconnect the power supply before you do any work inside there. Oftentimes there will be a power off switch on the back of the power supply. This one doesn't have it, but make sure you hit that power off switch. Make sure you disconnect, ground yourself, 
and then count to five at minimum before you do any work inside any of these PCs. Uh, we don't need that anymore. And I'm not going to get too aggressive at gutting this right now. I just want to get some stuff out of the way so that we can get some cards in here. I'm just going to let this uh, older power supply power the motherboard and then I'm going to throw in a server power supply. Now I'm trying to find a good spot for it. I'm thinking I'm going to do it in one of these expansion bays just to get up and running. And it'll be ugly, but we're going to get this rig up and running. I purchased this gold power supply. You could run this in tandem with that existing power supply uh, to power the additional cards that you're going to get up and running. You can get these pretty cheap on Amazon, just depending on the day that you look at them, anywhere between 60 and 90 bucks for brand new, or you could purchase something used. But you could run this with a tester, and most of these come with a little testing adapter that you put on there that allows you to run the power supply so that it doesn't have to be plugged into the motherboard and sensing activity from the from the motherboard. But that would get you up and running and may be the best thing for a new builder that's not familiar with working with server power supplies. I don't really think that they're that complicated, but just something to think about. You could do this or you could continue with the theme and pick up a used power supply and I got this from a miner that was selling some gear and you could save a bit of money going that way too. Alright so let me see if I can get this server power supply in here, get it mounted, get some power so we can start adding some cards. Alright guys I'm about to put in the power supply and every now and then I'm asked about server power supplies and it's not that this is really complicated at all it's just that people aren't familiar with them and if you haven't used them it's you just want to see how does it all connect, how does it all work. And it's pretty simple if you decide to go this route and you haven't worked with these before, you're going to pick up a server power supply. Again, I got this one used from another miner. You're going to get the breakout board for it. And what this does is this allows you to take this power supply that's designed to go in servers in a data center and allows you to add this module on to the back, this little breakout board. And it gives you your six pin PCI Express power slots and it gives us a bunch of them in this case we've got 12 on this board and to connect it it's really super simple you've got this tongue that comes out the back of the server power supply you insert it in the slot on the back of the breakout board and you're gonna have to slide it back and forth it takes a little bit of pressure to get it in which is a good thing because once it's in it's really solid and then you've got, this is your power on and off switch right here. And always make sure you're grounded before you touch anything on any of these boards. Um, and then you've got your six pin PCIe slots, like we said. And that's it. You get this up and running. If you want to daisy chain this off of another power supply, for a long time I wasn't doing this, but um, after we started the channel, we were chatting with some of you guys and we're talking about this and basically you've got a four pin port on some of these breakout boards and if you're shopping for a breakout board and you're not sure what to look for I'd recommend getting this that way you can take four pin onto this breakout board and when you turn on your ATX power supply this breakout board senses the power and then it goes ahead and powers on this power supply itself that way you don't have to reach back here and hit the power on, power off constantly. You just flip on the ATX power supply and you're golden. All right, I'm going to see if I can find a spot for this inside the case just to get up and running and I'll be back in a second. All right, so check this out. I was wanting to get one card mounted inside the case here and just get it up and running with one card get things set before we started getting too crazy adding a second, third card and so on. And when I did that, if you can see here, it's just a really tight fit. I've got the MSI 1660Ti in here. And it fits, barely, barely. But what I'm concerned with before I even power this thing on, before I even get the power uh, connector hooked up, reboot, get it on, is that this heat sink on this processor is so large that it looks like it's going to be keeping this fan from spinning. And... Uh, yeah, unless I can come up with another option here, we're just going straight risers. Get this thing going, get risers up, get the cards out of the case. Alright, not sure how good you can see this, but one of the tricks is going to be this single video card that I've got running. It's actually connected into the X16 slot 
here, the primary PCI Express slot. Okay guys, so I got one GPU up and running. We've got one 1660 Ti. I had a heck of a time getting the NVIDIA drivers installed on this machine. No matter what would happen, if I had the display port plugged in and I tried to install the drivers, first of all, you have to have an NVIDIA card in for the drivers to complete installation properly. And it didn't like the version of Windows for one reason or another that I had. Uh, so I had to jump through quite a bit of hoops and I ended up installing TeamViewer because of the number of times that this would not display out from the core system, the onboard graphics. Uh, I could get no video. So I installed TeamViewer. I was able to complete the driver installation and I've got a GPU up and running. But we're running about 30 mega hash per second on this card and I'm at uh, 70 power limit plus 100 plus 1000 and uh, we got a GPU mining away so let's uh, let's get a couple more up and running here and we'll come up with a few different configurations figure out the best way that we want to run with this thing out of the gate here for the next few days okay Raptors we're up and running on SMOS we've got some MTP going on here at about 1.676 mega hash per second. We're mining on a single GPU on this older motherboard here. Now we've got the single GPU working on Windows as well. We're trying to add the second and third GPUs but um, the issue we have I think is the PCIe bus availability, the bandwidth that we've got on the bus and just the options in this older motherboard. So it's causing some bottleneck for us. We're going to try to get that BIOS updated. Hopefully we don't brick the motherboard, but we're going to give that a shot right now. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, Raptors, here we go. We finally got this thing working. We've got it working with multiple GPUs, and it took me literally days to get this project done. I wanted to have this video out about two days ago, but between BIOS updates, video outputs, um, IRQ settings, like I'm back in the 1990s or something, uh, driver updates not installing, having issues with just legacy firmware. It's just been a complete crazy ride. It's been fun, but it's been pretty difficult. So I'm going to tell you what I did in the end. I updated the BIOS. I found a 2015 BIOS for this old machine. That really didn't help a whole lot. I went in and disabled all the settings that you would typically in Windows for mining. I did leave the firewall on and the antivirus on and just opened up the appropriate settings to make sure that my miners could run. And again, uh, you all saw I'm doing a nice hash setup here to make this, the whole idea was to make this easy for beginners. But at the end of the day, what saved me and is going to make this a viable mining rig is TeamViewer and this little adapter right here. Um, I had a buddy of mine that bought a bunch of these and was using them on his miners about a year ago. And he sold off a bunch of gear. I bought some of it from him and this is one of the things I bought. And at the time I kind of made fun of him for using these cards on a test motherboard that he had that didn't have very many slots. Uh, I didn't really believe in these. Now I can't explain why I went in and disabled a bunch of system resources to try to free up bus bandwidth on the system and um, I did have some progress but I threw this in there sort of as a Hail Mary last ditch effort and between this I got the machine to boot with multiple GPUs in the machine and uh, I used TeamViewer so the image I'm not exactly sure why it locked up and with TeamViewer I was able to get in and disable for example it reinitialized the default uh, video adapter with TeamViewer, once I disabled that, I only had the two existing GPUs showing, and now it is mining like a champ. And uh, yeah, so so far it is because of this uh, little adapter that I used to make fun of. So I'll put a link in the show notes to all of the stuff I'm using, to this adapter, uh, to this machine if you wanted to uh, do a crazy project on a weekend. Um, the video cards that we're using, the risers, I'll leave links of all of that in the show notes. However, we've got it up and running. And before I say anything else, let me show you this. And I am not doing a 
team viewer screen capture because I don't want to affect the results. Both of my 1660 Ti's are getting about 30 mega hash per second, 30.5 um, on Ethereum, and um, I was it was just mining Beam V2 a few moments ago and switched over to Ethereum. But anyway, it's up and running, and I'm just going to pick up this camera and show you guys the results, and just so you can see what we've got going here. So sorry for this bouncing around. I just don't want to um, affect the uh, the mining uh, when we do a screen capture here. So here we go. All right, so here's our miner mining on nice hash and you can see each of the GPUs is running at about 30.5 mega hash and we're at a total of about 60 to 61 mega hash per second and my settings for each of the video cards here I'm running there's both the cards showing up an afterburner I've got both of them set to a 70 percent power limit plus 100 plus 1000 so I just wanted to show you down inside the case what this looks like here. I mentioned this adapter that I put in and this is it. I have two of them that I picked up and so that's one of them in the primary X16 PCIe slot. Also we just wanted to show you real quick I mentioned that we were at 70 percent on the power limit and in Windows somewhere around 82 to 83 watts per card and we'll take a look at the wall as well. Okay guys, so I'm so late getting this video out and um, I went ahead and threw another GPU on here. So I've got, this is my primary, it's going out to the video right here and I've got the two other 1660 Ti's added to this little splitter back here. Alright, here we go. We've got all three up and running on Beam V2 doing about 80 souls per second, just just right at 80. Got some accepted shares coming in. All right, so we're at about 354 watts at the wall using the Tekken Wi-Fi switches. So looking pretty good. We've got three cards up with this splitter. I'm pretty excited about that, guys. Lots of different options here. I'm going to keep on playing with this and see what we can do with it. All right, so we're going to call this a success only because I've been working so hard on this for the past couple days. It is a fail in that part of the mission was to make it easy for beginners. This is not that. This is definitely not that. It's a fail on that front. It was a fun science project for sure, uh, but it, you know, it took all the skills I've got to get this thing up and running. I would definitely not recommend this for beginners. I would recommend it if you're someone that enjoys doing this sort of thing and you like tinkering on the weekends and you want to sit down and just really tear it apart and let's face it at 105 bucks for a system it's just not a huge loss if the thing doesn't work right and um, so I'm gonna have some fun with this we got it working on SMOS we got it working with multiple GPUs we've got it mining we've got it working on Windows 10 we've got a free license to go along with it I'm really stoked that this is all working I've got to use these adapters I'm gonna to have to apologize to my buddy and tell him that uh, these things sort of saved me in the end but uh, yeah, so we've got this working. I'm gonna leave it here. We're gonna get this all cleaned up and we are going to, in another video I think, we'll rework all this, maybe turn this into a test rig or I'm gonna take this and put it into its own, um, its own chassis, its own case. We'll just gut this whole system and maybe put it into like a $20 frame, something like that, dress it up and make it into a proper mining rig. And then I'm going to play around with a whole bunch of different video cards on the side outside of my other videos that we put out. Maybe I'll try some of those AMD uh, 580s. Uh, we'll try some different priced cards to give you some different options. But just to talk about that real quick, so what do we have price-wise here? We've got two brand new 1660 Ti's and these run about 270 each. So we're in for 540 on these uh, two video cards. We're in for 105 on the PC, so we're up to about let's call it 650 for the used power supply and breakout board and cables. We're in for about another 50 bucks on that, so we're into about 700 dollars. And with the breakout board that we purchased, uh, that we got right here, I think I got this for about 10 or 12 bucks for my buddy. I think you can get these for 20 to 25 dollars new. Uh, depending on uh, which model you get and from what manufacturer, there's a couple different ones out there.
we're up and running with a what I would call a respectable just getting out of the gate standpoint so we're running at 60 mega hash if I throw a third one on here we're almost at a hundred mega hash just under a thousand dollars now this is for new cards now let's talk about it if we went with those AMD cards you can pick up some good stuff from nerd gears out there for about a hundred bucks a card hundred and fifteen dollars a card if I got three cards three AMD cards running and I pay about three hundred let's call it three hundred fifty dollars for those AMD cards and I'm running just under a hundred mega hash so I'd say all in, you're at about $550. So there's some options out there where you can get about 100 mega hash, 90 to 100 mega hash with a refurb system, just sort of tearing it apart. Maybe, maybe turn it into a fun weekend science project, have some buddies over if you're into that kind of thing and make it work. Uh, so there's a lot of different options here from about a $550 price point up to you know we were you can get sub 1000 if you want to throw some new gear in here so this was a ton of fun this was a lot of frustration I'm gonna tell you here's what I'd like if you make it to the end of this uh, where you got to see the outcome here if you have done anything like this if you pit purchased a refurbed rig if you took and repurposed an old one from work or maybe one you had there in the family and you had success with it leave it in the comments below let us know what models you're using uh, because we'd all like to I mean heck it's just fun to kind of play around with this kind of stuff, right? And if you have other options, ideas on ways that you can kind of piece this together, maybe buying on eBay, tell us about some good deals that you got with a motherboard, uh, a processor, maybe the RAM, maybe a complete bare bones system that is specific for mining. So you don't have to jump through all the hoops that we did. But anyway, we're running long now. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you've done and what experience you have out there. If there's anything you think I could have done better to got this done faster, Please let me know, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care, Raptors. Bye-bye.